Hello everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you for your interest in the course Level Up Your Lighting and Rendering. This week we are going to follow up from the session which we did 2 weeks ago where we looked at the robot room scene and last week I told you about what USD is. So if you haven't watched that video, I would highly recommend you do that so that you have a general idea of what we are going to do today. We are going to be transferring all the objects from this robot room scene to Katana using USD workflow. And before I get started, I would like to make sure that we are all on the same page. So I just wanted to show you that I have grouped certain objects in different categories and I did that so that I can put them in the same UV layout so that it becomes easier for me to texture them. So for now, if you take a look, I have a few groups which are only material. So this group does not have any specific uh, UV set because these all the objects will have their own materials and I have different objects in their own group in this one. Then I have a single poly mesh, which is home walls, and that just concludes the outer exterior and interior walls. And they are simple box UV layout. And then I have a group called furniture. And as the name explains, it has all the furniture in it. And this will be used so that I can uniformly texture all the furniture and they have the like same aesthetic. Then the next group is accessories, which basically include all the small ornaments in the scene. Uh, for example, the carpets, the different boxes newspaper, even a few hanging materials, thermostat, etc. And the next group is body and it includes different meshes for all three robots. They're not in just one UV layout. So I have multiple UDIMs for these and I want to texture them separately. So that's why I kept them like that. Now you don't have to follow the same exact pattern. You can do it however you want. You, if you want, you can create it into an asset library as well and basically texture each object separately. But this is what I went with because it was easier for me and I don't really want to put these as separate assets. So this is the workflow I'm following. So now that we know what's in the whole scene, let's start to export it. So before we start exporting the overall scene using USD, I would like to make sure that you have both the plugins open. So if you go into plugin manager from windows, setting and preferences, plugin manager, just make sure that you have both Maya to Hydra as well as Maya USD plugin loaded. Once you have that, what we'll do is we'll select all the objects, including the render camera. You don't have to select the render camera, but I'm just doing it. You can even remove it later. So select all of the objects and the render camera, go to file, export selection and click the box on the right of it. This will give you all the options of what you want to export things as. So in the general options, go to file type. So there are multiple file types, but what we are going to be using is USD. Now, even in USD, you have two options. One is Arnold USD and one is USD export. So I have tried both of these and USD export is the general preferred method in the industry. But what it does with Katana is it will separate different objects and materials in a way that you won't be able to link it properly. So what I always prefer is the Arnold USD workflow. So in the general option, go to Arnold USD. And in there, I would like you to click on two of the export parameters. First of all, make sure that your file type is using binary encoding. Then the other options, which I would like you to make sure is checked is options and shapes. This will make sure that all of your USD files have at least the preferred naming convention as well as hierarchy and shapes will include both the meshes and their transformations. So overall the scene will look the same. So you will go in ahead and set export selection. Once you do that, what I'm going to export it in the exports folder in the same scene hierarchy. So I'll go ahead and open that and I'll name it just like full scene. For example, you can name it anything. So I'm going to name it as full scene underscore Arnold, just so that I know that I used Arnold's USD method and I'll export the selection. And that's how you export USD from Maya using Arnold workflow. Uh, you can prefer the USD export, but sometimes it doesn't work properly. So this is the one which I prefer. So to check this export, uh, I'm going to go and open Katana and check it in that. Now I'm using the same Katana batch file to open the scene so that all my plugins are loaded and RenderMan is selected as the default renderer. If you don't have a batch file or you don't have the USD plugin installed in Katana, 
I would highly recommend you check out the video which I did on, when I explain how to install plugins for both Maya and Katana for USD. So this would be really important in this step. So to see the file, I'll go ahead and use the USD in node. I'll click on node graph and then press tab and then you can type USD in and select the node. Once you have the node, double click on it and that will give you its parameters. Now in order to open the file, you have to go and select the file name here in the parameter. Select browse. So I'll go to my file location, click on exports and check the full scene USD. Once I have that, I still won't see anything in the viewport because the scene graph is still collapsed. To uncollapse the scene graph, you go ahead in the leftmost scene graph panel and select the root. In order to open it, double click on the root and it should expand everything. Now you should see how different objects have been placed in Katana from Maya. Once you've done that, now you can see that all the objects from Maya have come as they were to Katana. And this is really convenient for us because now we can still access individual objects, but we don't have to form the hierarchy ourselves as it is way more easier to form the scene hierarchy and assemble it in Maya than it is in Katana. So with that done, I'll end this lesson here. And now we have the scene in Katana. In subsequent lessons, we'll look at how we can start to texture it, light it, and get the overall render in Katana itself. So I would like to thank you all for watching and thank you for all your support. It's been really immense and I really love it. And I'll keep making more of these videos and I hope to help you all. Alright then, see you later. Cheers.